welcome to Marketing WTF Podcast, Marketing with Tran and Fabris. We are here, episode number 11, and today we are going to be talking about how to generate high-quality content consistently. Uh, everybody knows that in 223, content is basically what sets you free, what sets your clients free, what basically both commonized businesses are cornerstoned on. Uh, and today we're going to break down some of the tactics and tips and, and stuff that we're using daily to actually get big wins for our clients and, and deliver a really positive ROI. So Tom, how are you doing today? I'm good, brother. Another solid, beautiful day. Um, excited to share what uh, we got on this on this topic, really, you know? Yeah. All right. Uh, I think this one is extremely important because uh, basically any agency owner or small business that's you know, looking to generate new business and connect with customers. You know, both of us have drank the Kool-Aid years ago that basically it's video first, you know, if not video and it's like graphic design, it no matter what, it has to be scroll stopping. It has to be something that actually holds somebody attention and holds them there long enough to consume your message. Uh, and, and I know for myself, getting in front of the camera the first time to actually deliver that message was one of the the most difficult things in my life, you know, to actually get my my head around that, to make sure that my studio was set up right, to make sure that I was speaking on brand and on message and making sure that what I actually said had value to the people that are consuming it. Uh, and, and I would assume most new creators are kind of stuck in that same situation. So kind of before we get into anything, Tom, I, I'd like to kind of break down like what it is that, that, you think is is really important about you know setting up the quality of your own recording like once you decide the video is the key what are the components that are required to actually be able to deliver at a at a high clip consistently yeah i mean i think so, there's a lot to unpack there right i think the very first thing is why video um and for you and your business because oftentimes uh people may think right some common objections are i'm in a business to where I don't want to show my face. I don't need to show my face. I don't need to be there. I'm in B2B versus B2C, right? All of these, I like to frame them as limiting beliefs, right? Are merely untrue. Cause in the end of the day, you're doing business with another person. Okay. And if you're going to show up, right. And your competition doesn't, this is another avenue for you to win. Right. But more than anything, I feel as though like with video and utilizing it, it's an asset class that is ultimate leverage. It's always working for you. So if you recognize that video could help give you an advantage, right? That's the first step, right? If you're then committed to trying to start using video, right? I don't know where you are. In the, I don't know where people are in the journey, but it could be anywhere from, I recognize I need video or I don't know if I do need video, right? That's the very first step, right? If you know, acknowledge that you do need video, then how do I get started? After getting started, how do I stay consistent? then how do I level up, right? In the end of the day, most importantly, think about it as a conversation you're having with someone else, right? If you're having a great conversation with someone and you're answering, getting to know them, right? You're building rapport, you're talking about your business, the types of people or customers or business that you help, right? And how you help them. What if you had that documented in a way, i.e. video, to where you could play that to people numerous times, right? To numerous people at once have it go out there and work on your behalf while you're literally ne networking with someone else face-to-face. -face. So it shouldn't basically replace or remove something that you're doing. It should only add more value to the things that you're already doing. And if you think about it in the context of this is the most efficient way for you to be able to clone yourself and your message and make sure that's dialed in, right? No one else is going to say it, deliver it, um, or perform it, if you will, better than you because no one else is going to care more about what you do than you do, quite frankly, right? Mm hmm like in respects to your own business absolutely mm -hmm. um okay so so definitely step one is deciding if you are in an industry that needs video you know i've i've definitely over the years had more than 100 clients the only one that convinced me that they didn't need video uh basically they made ultra high-tech cameras for nasa to put on space shuttles and the only people that were calling them were calling them you know, through like the student department of like universities that everybody's heard of, 
you know, like where it, it's just a thing and it was basically always done by a Google search and it would only be technical terms. That's the only time anybody has ever convinced me that video doesn't actually matter. Past that, anything that is like a, you know, basically a small business, a personal business, just actually, you know, getting your face out there and telling people what you sell. I believe it's 100% correlated. You know, the amount of people that you ask to buy is correlated to the amount of people that buy off you on any single day. So let's just assume that we're talking to somebody and they have decided mm -hmm. that business is the key. They don't know where to start. You know, maybe they own a cell phone. They're thinking they're going to do a series of videos from their house. Um, how would you recommend that they that they get started with that? Some kind of key things to keep in mind, you know, make sure the house is quiet, make sure your pets aren't around, all, all of that kind of stuff. What do you think would be two or three pieces of advice somebody should really hold on to if they're setting up their own home studio? Yeah, I think the number one thing is being authentic. Be authentic with your message, right? We can work on everything else, right? Understand that. Imagine as if you're having a conversation with an ideal prospect on the other side of that lens, right? We can get, we can dial in all the specifics, but ultimately imagine as if you're having that conversation, you're already talking to somebody because ultimately that's how you want to come off, right? When we get into the nitty gritty of things, effectively, what do you need, right? You need a something to be able to, to capture video. Uh, the most important thing is your message. No matter what anyone says, right? Start where you are, right? And oftentimes when you think about what to say, the what part of what to say is typically going to start off with frequently asked questions, right? Mm -hmm. Typically in a conversation, when you have with someone that's rapport building first, then you more than likely get into frequently asked questions, right? You're either trying to diagnose someone's problem to see if you can solve it, or within that conversation, people are asking you questions that are frequently asked. So that would be a good series of things to kind of uh, start with in that sense. When it that's comes to the aesthetics of stuff, right? Make sure that you are in a place where your audio picks up first. Because no matter how good something looks, if people can't hear you, they're gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna pay attention, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's super actually effective. When I made my first series of videos, I just kind of picked random topics and then tried to kind of freestyle them, and did like thirty versions of each. I know they were trash, uh, but again, I looked at them as like just get them done so that that there's that content out there. Mm -hmm. But you're saying essentially start with the FAQs because that's what people are asking, right? They've already let to know your previous clients have already asked those questions. You know, somebody is saying that. Uh, and even more importantly, what I'm hearing is don't just be crazy. Kevin speaking to the phone, be Kevin yelling at my phone. That's actually speaking to a customer I can visualize. I'm not just saying it in my head. I know that I'm speaking to Phil and Phil has a certain set of desires and needs and just kind of envision it that way so that it comes off natural and authentic. Yes, absolutely. Hit record once, let it run, right? Because what ends up happening when you get into the thick of things, right, is there's going to be a point where you have to warm up just like anything else, right? Mm -hmm. If you are going to be on camera, there's a lot of things that you haven't done before or not done enough. Right. Oftentimes it may not be the actual script in itself, but it's just you practicing. You're not getting enough reps in. Right. So instead of you starting and stopping, you know, set your phone on a tripod or hold it in your hand, hit record and just look at the look at it and and talk and walk. Get comfortable with that process because there's a lot of things that you haven't done before to get comfortable with. Right. So if you think about it from that standpoint, right, what we want to do is just get comfortable with this new muscle that we're flexing, this new skill set that you're creating. And for the creators that have already been have already done this, um, cool. So if you've already done this, now how do you do it at scale or how do you dial in, say, that delivery better? Is it the delivery of what you're saying in terms of your messaging or is it, say, the equipment that you have that you need to level up? Because quite frankly, in the end of the day, my objective is to make sure that the people that bought into video get started. Because if you get started and do your first one, you got the activity knowledge down, right? You're you're, you're you're better off than what you were before sitting in the classroom thinking about it and never doing it. But for the people that have done 50 reps or 100 reps, right, it all starts with that first one. So for the, for, for the people that are at 20, rep 25 or rep 50, think about how you can level things up because ultimately in, in the end of the day, people have said, and I think I repeated myself, right, in that sense of that, or that statement, but um, you only have one chance to make a first impression, mm. right? So to your best ability with what you have and what you can afford right now in terms of time and investment in terms of the money, the, the money side, yeah, dial your stuff in so that you show up properly. Because if you do and you stand out, right, and you're standing out in a better way than, say, your competition, right, 
you make an impact. So quality mm. absolutely matters too, right? Is quality just related to the message essentially? Like truthfully, if I'm looking for like the key that's going to set my business free and you, you know, just show up on my Twitter timeline, I don't really care if you're in flip-flops at the beach or if you just got off your bike or if you're sitting in an office in a suit. Mm -hmm. The way like there's a little bit of personal branding that lets me know who you are as an individual, but ultimately I'm there because you can solve my problem. And if you, you actually show up with that right message at the right time, that's really going to go way farther than the rest of the setup. You know, basically anybody's yep. cell phone these days can get, you know, high quality video and sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? You can get 4k, yeah. you have 4k in your pocket. Most of you have 4k in your pocket. So don't worry about that. But to your point, absolutely. Right. So the nuance of what happened was, uh, if you think about it, when the world shut down and we could no longer go out, these one-on-one -on -one networking groups were forced onto zoom or some type of a web communicating platform a video communicating or video conferencing platform right so when that happened how do you show up how do you stand out from the competition you're mm. in this little box in this little frame right do you sound better do you show up better can you can you deliver better right those are the things that set you apart but even more than that the foundation of that is showing up with value at the right time right so if you create your video series of your frequently asked questions and you're recording on your phone even if it's outside and it's kind of and it's kind of whatever not quote unquote, perfect or like super high quality, the value of it is there. Because what ended up happening was because of this influx of people onto video platforms, there was a whole bunch of more people that became creators, even if they didn't realize that they were a creator or not. Mm. Right. But then ultimately, with all of this new, say, uh, video content being put into these uh, platforms, oftentimes, if something is overly high produced, people are going to sniff the sniff test is, oh, you're trying to sell me something. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Are you delivering value? Or are you saying something? And do you look a certain way because you're trying to sell me something? Right. So there's a balance there. I don't want anyone to overthink that. Right. But understand the fact that if you have value to deliver and you are in video, hit record on your 4K smartphone, do your thing. Right. Because you know that it's not the first one that's going to be the best one. Right. We're aiming at 100 or 200 or 300 videos down the road. Right. Like any job you've ever had. You know, right. like, when I was a waiter in university, the first table I showed up to was not the best table I ever did. But if I didn't take step number one, I never would have, you know, served table 10,000. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I did that way too long. The, the most important step on any journey is the first step. Yeah. So, okay, if we have it dialed in where essentially, you know, it's showing up and coming up with, with you know, showing up with value. You know, for myself, I've had bad knees for a few years and I'm always looking for new ways to do it. And recently I'm I'm on this kick where I think that the the actual solution for my knee problem is fixing my hips. Right. So I've been going on a bunch of like basically voyages in, in Twitter and Instagram where essentially it starts with like the keyword of like hip tightness. And then I'm I'm going through 20, 30 videos. I'm following the channels that I believe are actually giving me good content that stands out from the other ones. And I'm a hundred percent open to anything that they have to sell me as long as it solves my problem. Right. So, you know, I know I'm involved in some of these people's funnels already. Uh, and basically that funnel is based on value. So how do you actually deliver value in, in your scripts or when you're setting up with people, uh, with clients of yours, and if you're you're making, say, a video sequence, if you're batching content with them, how is it that you actually decide what they're going to say, and how do you help them frame it in a way that sounds kind of natural and authentic? Yeah, I think the very first thing is going back to just imagining having a conversation with someone face to face, mm -hmm. right? And if you think about it, if you are in front of someone and you're answering questions, oftentimes the speaker, right, right, that one that's proctoring the or the host of that show or that uh, of, or that panel, if you will, is going to ask you to repeat the question before you have the answer or before you say the answer, right? So the very first thing is defining what topics you want to talk about, right? What are the things you want to talk about that are frequent to you that you can offset or point to or have working for you while you're doing your thing, right? Frequently asked questions, should ask questions, kick ass questions, industry specific things that only you would know because you're an industry professional. So within those three categories, you can go on a Google and find them if you don't already know them or if you need more. Right outside of that, once you have those questions, the very first and easiest thing to do is just look at that question, right? Understand what, like, understand what your answer is going to be. So I, I know you've worked with a bunch of mortgage brokers in the past. Mm -hmm. 
um, how is it that you would set them up in terms of like, say, the frequently asked questions, uh, answers you should know and kick ass questions? How would you kind of break down that process? Yeah. So the very first place I go is I'd ask them, okay, um, what type of loan products do you offer? Mm -hmm. Right. And what's, what are you seeing now? Cause it, typically there's only two types of people that they work with, right. In terms of the end user is either going to be, um, someone that is getting a new loan or it's a refinance. There's nothing in between mm -hmm. but it, within there, there's subsets of products. So mm -hmm. then within those products, now we're identifying a specific product for a specific person. What questions do they have? Okay. So in any industry, do you think it would apply if you basically start with what is it that you sell? Absolutely. So as an end user, I'm saying, okay, what is it I'm act? What is the action I'm actually trying to get somebody to take? If I'm in the mortgage space, I'm trying to get them to basically say, I want a new mortgage or I want to refinance my existing mortgage. If I'm, you know, basically going B to C with a marketing company, generally the person is going to want either, you know, truthfully they're going to want more money through more customers. You now, if it's an ecom. E Essentially, I'm trying to get more people to the website to make more purchases, right? Okay, so once I've defined what it is we're selling, then I'm going to peel it back a little bit more and I'm going to look for like the motivation as to why people would want to buy that. Um, it could be motivation. Again, it goes back to what it is that you're, say, selling, right? If you are selling something that's signature to you, like say a restaurant or something, then mm -hmm. just double down on that, right? Like, what are the key features or benefits or the times of that, right? If you're talking about it, hey, this is what we have. We have 16 taps, right? Mm -hmm. We're open from this time to this time. We're here, customer service. The things that you're already saying and doing is just another, say, megaphone for you basically utilize for, right? In terms of utilizing four video topics for you to be able to um, talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's essentially it's the benefits, your unique selling propositions. Those are the things that you want to keep front and center, as well as the questions that people who already know about you are asking you, like mm -hmm. your FAQs is kind of where to start. Uh, now, because we're talking about making quality content consistently, mm -hmm. uh, I know you always preach on actually batching mm -hmm. uh, your content together. So I, I want to actually... One, ask you, what does batching content mean? And then number two, kind of think about like a way that I could set up the content ahead of time, because I don't just show up and make 10 videos. I have to show up knowing why I'm making 10 videos and what the point of those 10 videos are and where those 10 videos are, are pushing somebody. Yeah, and that's a great point. So if you think about the process in itself, the process that you go through in creating your very first video that I'm encouraging everyone to do, right? that process, if you think about that right, as an assembly line or a checklist of things, how do you then batch that process so that at the very end, your output is more than one video, right? There's different schools of thought. Some people don't like doing that. Some people like doing that. I feel as though as a busy entrepreneur, right? It's a benefit for me to be able to batch that process together. So instead of just defining one video topic and then writing out the script and then hitting record and then editing and then publishing, right? How many can I take down that line and how efficient can I be so that at the very end, I have more than just one video? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if that, if that's where we're starting, we've already established our list of our very initial topics from there, what we're doing to get our first batch, um, basically, um, scripted, if you will, is we're basically just re, uh, stating the question and then answering it as if we were talking to someone. Right. And then we're hitting record. Like that, that plays as your hook essentially. No, see, we haven't even introduced her yet, right? This is just that first batch to get that done, right? So if if we're going to dial it in, getting your first round of videos together, you know already that you're not going to be the best. It's not going to be your A plus effort or game, right? So get them out the door. Just make sure that you're going through this process. Once you go through one, you then can go through, say, batching and then recording all of them uh, with that framework. No copywriting hooks have been integrated or even introduced to this person yet. Because oftentimes these people, our business owners that we're helping, they're not marketers. They might be super smart in what they do, like super talented, but they don't understand, right? One, that they've been like, you have to talk to people at say where they're at with just normal human vocabulary, ordinary vocabulary. So we haven't even introduced these things yet, right? Now, fasting, fast forward in terms of batching, say, scroll stopping content that social media channels are wanting right now, vertical videos. What we've done is you think about it, you have to think about it from a copywriting perspective, right? What makes your a, a, someone stop? 
I sc uh, stop their scroll. So as you as a consumer, if you're on any of these platforms and you're scrolling through these vertical videos, what are those things? One, it might be some type of action that you're doing, a prop or a tool. It might be the way in which you deliver um, uh, 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 the question, which is what effectively the first line of that video is typically what we like to call a hook, right? A hook. It's like a call out question that you're trying to get somebody to essentially, if I give you this two seconds where you hear me out, are you hooked? That, that's literally it. Are you going to stick around for the next 20 because you believe the payout is worth it? The hook is designed, right? In the sense of like you asking a question or making a statement in the first three seconds, right? That entices someone to stop scrolling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we've done, right? What I've done is in the, in working with my own video content and working with clients as well, it's been a challenge to be able to say, Hey, look, here's a list of hooks. Here's what you're saying. Now go ahead and combine that and write that script. They're not going to do it. So if we do it on their behalf, right, as the um, as the agency, the challenge then is, okay, I have a, a, a winning hook that I know is one of these scroll stopping hooks. I have the topic. Once I create a script out of that, oh, it isn't in the voice of my client, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to go back and forth with that, right? So what we've been able to do to kind of um, not just bypass that, but then just to get over that hump is that process in itself, right, um, requires a little bit of back and forth. So once you get to the fact of, to where you have this um, script that you're reviewing as the person, as the actual talent that's recording the, the, the videos, what you want to do is be, basically read that script out loud. Mm -hmm. Read it out loud. The hooks in itself may be uncomfortable, but just know that they're weaved in there because it they work, right? But if there's words that you commonly don't use that you're getting hung up on, you're tripping up over it, but it just, or it doesn't feel right, change it into your own words. So you know that the framework is solid because it's proven, right? It's a copywriting formula, whether it's hook, problem, solution, hook, problem, agitate, solution, whatever you're doing, right? Um, the framework there works is worked throughout time, right? So we know that that's not the issue. The issue might be the performance of it to say, ah, oh, that necessarily, I wouldn't say it that way. Awesome. So once you- In, in essence too, like any business owner that's been up and running for a while, when you talk about- um, you know, if you give them a jump off on one of their FAQs, they can speak about that passionately. And, and you know, the, the problem is not, can I speak about this for a minute? It's like, can I speak about this for less than a minute? Yes. Because any industry you're in, it's like, hey, can you, like, why would I want to refinance my house? Right. Somebody would go off on it. They could give you half an hour on that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because that's all they do every single day. And the point is, like once you hit that flow state, that's when the videos actually work. When you forget that you're speaking to a camera and you're just literally answering the question in the way that you would naturally, that's when these videos are are really working for people. I've seen it time and time again. And every script that I've ever made, you know, in general, like when they're reading it, it doesn't work. It works as a jump off. This is what we're trying to say in this segment. The hook is going to actually call them out. Yeah, and if you think about it too, like a 30 second or a 60, 60 second video isn't going to give you an entire answer with all the details. What, it want, what you want to do is peak interest to start a conversation. The objective of that video for you is to peak interest, right? Cool. Stop the scroll, peak interest, start a conversation with the person that's on the other side of that video. So it's not even solving the problem. It's just saying this is how we could solve the problem. You know, essentially identifying that you have the answer to this problem if they want to talk more. Mm -hmm. Or there's just more, right? If this is the starting point of that conversation, I do have that problem. That might be one symptom of that problem. I don't know how to solve that because there's no way you're going to be able to solve that in 60 seconds or 30 seconds at best, right? Then it's like, what's that next thing? Hey, a business, a business has complex problems, right? Like truthfully, right. if they could solve it in one second scrolling on TikTok, well, they would have done that shit already. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what it does too is it shows that you're, you're top of mind, right? What you want to do is be able to provide value. So how much value can you provide in 30 seconds? That's the key. Or in 60 seconds, that's the key, right? If you have this problem, here might be some answers to it. Or here's some answers if you have these few problems, right? And the view time is actually going to really matter for you. The reason that you have to keep it hot is because essentially that's going to tell the algorithm that for people like this person, this content is, is valuable. So you hit yeah. them with the book. So that essentially they're going to be there for three, four, five seconds right off the bat, call them out in that, in that way. And then just 
try to stack as much value as you can in there to keep them on for the 30 seconds or 45 seconds that you want. Absolutely. So the rest, like, you know, the ingredients to this recipe are going to be subject matter expert or business owner that has something to sell or some type of service to provide. Either way, you're selling something, right? A physical product or a service. That, and then you have these proven messaging temp, like, you know, frameworks, which is the copywriting descripting, right? And then you have these social media platforms that want vertical video. So if you think about these ingredients, how do you now then map this business owner to then play nicely with the social media platforms to where it's benefiting their business? So with all of those ingredients put in mind, you know, and with the advancements of AI, I've been able to put a few of those things together to make it a heck of a lot easier for that business owner to the point of where now it's like, once we've identified and gone through, say, onboarding, what type of business do you own? What do you sell? Who do you sell it to? And we define all these topics, right? I've created an automation to be able to pull that information that we've extracted from that business owner, right? Um, map that with uh, a series of proven hooks and then be able to create scripts that are a 30 second version and a 60 second version. So then now we have an initial run of an output for these scripts. Let's say there's 30 of these scripts. Within these 30 scripts now that we have, right? How much has the business owner had to do? We've had maybe a 45 minute to an hour call to understand more. So I can understand more about their voice, right? In terms of who they are, how they show up, their personality, but then also uh, the topics that we kind of need to uh, basically start generating ideas around. Now that business owner, after that say 45 minute to a, a one hour call, right? Is going to then get presented with these 30 scripts, right? The next exercise for us now, right? Is condense so many time frames right? To be able to get to where we are now, right? Now the business owner can review the scripts, say them out loud, adjust them. So then basically they're wordsmith them so that they sound more authentic, if you will. And then we're getting to the point of just hitting record. So you think about all of those different stages, right? That you'd have to go through to create 30 videos uniquely one by one, or we can do it in one fell swoop now to where now they're showing up, reviewing the script on the day that we hit record on the day that we shoot, we hit record, they perform their scripts, their job's done, and then it gets handed off to the editing team, right? So you have an automation that essentially does all of the prompts and all of the scripts a business owner would use as long as they're in specific industries. Essentially, these are the, the start-off points that give people the information that they need so that they can batch the content effectively. Yep. All right, well, let's hop into that because that is is more impressive than anything that I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, share my screen real quick and go over that. We got a Zapier set up, but then it all starts with basically understanding uh, your video topics, right? So regardless if you use uh, chat GPT to do that, you talk to the subject matter expert slash business owner, um, you want to get your list of topics first. So if you think about it from the process, right? Once I have my video topics, how am I going to answer them within a 30 second limit or a 60 second limit, right? Okay. How, how do you pick your video topics? Yeah. So um, like we were saying before, right? Um, depends on the industry in itself. Frequently asked questions, should ask questions, kick ass questions or is, is the, the, the the jump. That's the very that's the very first step. So could I start off by essentially going to chat GTP and saying, hey, can you give me 30 FAQs that would be relevant for a bricklayer in Buffalo, New York? Yeah, you can. And if you think about it this way too, the way in which we prompt chat GPT is a little bit different, right? Because what we do first, we set the stage. So the very first thing I'm telling chat GPT to do is basically act as what, right? You are going to be my guide. You're going to be my assistant. But then in this case specifically, what the prompt that I'm using here, just to kind of get, you know, us started with this conversation is act as an expert copywriter and video marketing consultant that helps clients with building their personal brand using short form video on social media. I okay, so it's acting up. like you. Yes. That's how you set that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Me or my assistant, right? And then the very first thing I do is I ask it to reply if you understand or ask any follow-up questions. So I set the stage, who you are, what you're doing, how are you going to be helping me? And then reply that you understand or ask me any follow-up questions for additional context. So chat okay. GPT responds, I understand your request. As in, and then it goes down and it basically says, this is what I understand. And this uh -huh. is the thing I'm going to need to move on to the next step, right? Okay, and I see you have certain plugins enabled on this chat. Are they relevant to the answers here or? Yeah, so um, with the recent, more recent updates to ChatGPT, you can't openly scour the web anymore. So mm -hmm. some of these uh, plugins allow you to at least pull in different, say, resources, whether they're from YouTube, from specific websites, 
it opens up GPT to doing more than what its uh, its knowledge base is um, contained around. Mm. Okay. Right. So, essentially, what you're saying here is help me out. You're gonna be you're gonna be my guy here. You're gonna help me kind of create it. Yeah, and if you didn't know those questions, this is one starting point in terms of how do you want to say get some of those questions right for the topics for your videos. Once you have the topics, right, then the next step is okay. How do I write a script that's confined in thirty seconds or sixty seconds and use a um, a high converting copywriting hook? Well, okay. I have a list of hooks. Right there's a list on this one Google Sheet of one hundred and five. I think it was one hundred four. Sorry, um, one hundred and four hooks that are highly converting across different industries, right? Okay, so like these niche results speak for themselves. Don't Have believe it. this niche. Don't believe this digital marketing myth. Your other digital marketers are lying to you. If you haven't heard this digital marketing news, you must be living under a rock. So these are all call-ins that would apply the same way if I said, if you haven't heard this uh electrician news you must be living under rock if you haven't heard this pro hockey player news you must be under like it would basically apply for for whatever industry can we look at the actual zap construction again please yeah so if you think about what you just did right there kevin right then that there's a nuance that requires expertise as well right you have a topic and then you have a hook and how do you basically fill in this template for the hook to match the industry and then write and then write a script around that right mm -hmm. that takes effort so with the fact that we're using ChatGPT now, and we've already primed it to be an expert copywriter and video marketing consultant for that helps our clients write scripts for short form video used for social media, that's as specific as we can get, right? So we're priming it that way to say, help me do the heavy lifting. So I, I'm not sitting here trying to replace some or fill in the blanks, right? Because you already picked 100 that work, 105 that work. Right, so right. This is, this is what it is. I need attention in three seconds. These are proven to get me attention in three Absolutely. seconds. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So now we go into the process. That's all this app is, right? So where the initial stage of it is, where are my inputs? For me, I wanted to put it in a place where I could readily get to, right? So for me, it was Slack. So I created a specific Slack channel, right? Where OpenAI would then receive the prompt. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing in the Slack channel is I will then put in the video topic, right? So the video topic goes into the Slack channel. From here, chat GPT, in this case, I'm using OpenAI, right, um, to then um, recognize that input. So from here, what happens is the very first thing, here's the prompt, and I'll reverse engineer that. The prompt okay. is here, setting the stage for the prompt, right? You're a fun, smart marketing assistant who is writing short form video script for us. You can change all this as well and test it in terms of seeing how the output is, okay? Short form videos are this, they're defined. Short form videos are 60 seconds or less, catchy and start with the hook. Write a script for a video about that's the topic I put into the Slack channel, right? And then I wanted to start that uh, script by using a hook from uh, using yes. the following hook to start. And that hook is from taken from that list on that Google sheet. Okay. So is it randomized from that sheet? Or 100%. Is, I have it randomized so on purpose. Randomized so that it always comes up with something a little different. Yes. Okay. So what essentially what you're saying here is that if we open up a Slack channel that's connected to this Zap, what you're saying is, you know, like, I don't know if you say, write me a script about uh, lead gen follow-up or write me a script about, you know, how, uh, you know, why reviews are important to plumbers. Uh, mm -hmm. you, are you writing, write me a script? Or are you just saying, why are reviews important to plumbers? You can do it either way. Chat GPT is uh, smart enough to know, right? Um, but you can do it either way, directly as a command. Right. Three reasons why reviews are important for um, a plumbing business, a local plumbing business, or write me a script so for it. fine. I would write that into a dedicated Slack channel. And then mm -hmm. that starts the trigger. That trigger is then going to send, is going to start this zap. Mm -hmm. It's going to go through this process and actually give us a 30 second uh, video script output as well as a 60 second output at the end. Yep. And the one zap that we're looking at right now is, is a 60 second script. And I have another zap for a 30 second script. So the output okay, is so two different okay. scripts, right? So there's two different zaps that are running. One workflow runs for a 60 second version. One workflow runs for a 30 second version. And because they're running in parallel to each other, meaning they're separate, right? The hooks that they use are going to be different, but the topics are the same. 
So you're going to have two different scripts to basically pick from with two okay. different. To, to just look at the setup here of this step, I'm looking DaVinci. So the model is text DaVinci 03. Mm -hmm. uh, the prompt makes sense. Temperature when you're saying 0.7, that's a temperature out of one. Uh, why have you set it at 0.7 as opposed to one? It's a test. I mean, the the higher you get to one, the more creative it's supposed to be. The lower the lower you get to zero, um, it's supposed to be more factual. So I played around with it, and that's something that anyone else can tweak, right? By default, we came out with we're set at seven, and it seems to work fine for the service based professionals that we write scripts for. Um, that I wrote scripts for when I created this uh, specific app. Okay, that that's very interesting because when I set it at one, I I found very very salesy output. Mm. Right. So that 0.7 keeps it a little kind of natural and keeps it. Okay. It could be the prompt as well, though, right? It's usable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then you're keeping a maximum length to 300 words or 300 characters. Yeah. 300. I think it's words. words. Yeah. And that gives you your, your, uh, the correct time. Yep. Uh, top P is just where it shows up on the list. Yeah. And I don't know what the hell frequency, I don't know what these penalty things are. So I just ignore them. All right. So essentially you put it in and then it goes through the formatter, the the job of the formatter in mm -hmm. this app. What does that do? Yeah, the formatter basically is that's really where you can um, allow chat GPT to pull from a CSV file, which effectively is what that hook C, uh, Google Sheet was. Mm -hmm. that's and way you do that it. actually because you take that C, the CSV file and you email it to yourself and yep. then you connected it to to Google essentially. And you said, anytime you're looking for this, go into my Gmail and look for this file I've already uploaded. Pick one of the, pick one of the, the jump off points, essentially pick one of the hooks that I've already decided, mm -hmm. then use chat TTP to make it industry specific and give me the output that I require. Right. Wild. I've done this. Like, to be honest, I know what we're talking about here. And even though I've set this up on my own and looking at it, it's still very complicated, but I've seen it where I've, I've made 20 videos like this myself. I know it works, but I don't understand necessarily why it works. I just know it works, <laughs> you know, and yeah. that's what I'm, I'm getting you to unpack this for me right here. Yeah, no, and I'll circle it back to it, right? Like the manual way to do this is going to be, you're going to have to pick a hook. You're going to have to pick the topic and then go in and chat GPT and enter all that stuff in. So you have to manually prime the chat conversation in chat GPT every single time you do this. So I was mm -hmm. like, well, is there a better and faster way to do that by using the same language model, right? And I'm testing it with chat GPT because now Zapier has two different plugins, right? You have one with OpenAI, which is the, this one specifically, and there's another one to access chat GPT. So the chat GPT one is literally accessing chat GPT. So then you can choose uh, GPT-4. Okay. It's a nuance that I'm still testing with. And that's the beauty of it is because if you have these there and you're testing them, you can see what the output is without having to physically do it every single time. So I'm trying to automate these manual tasks as much as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you, okay. So we do this, it goes into the open AI mm -hmm. and then step four, it basically is going to produce the output for you in two places. I have it in Slack so I can get immediate feedback for that specific topic right there. So I get versions, uh, two versions, right? The 30 second and the 60 second. But if I'm doing this and I want it on a, another place to, uh, to review, like for a client or just to kind of review when I'm batching and recording, I also have the output sent to a Google Sheet as well. So the Google Sheet is going to have different columns on it. Um, so one column is going to be, what was the topic that I submitted? Another mm -hmm. column is, for the 30 second version, what hook did chat GPT use? Then what was the script based off of that topic, that hook um, that chat GPT wrote in that time duration? There's a 30 second one and then there's a 60 second one. So I'll see the topic, the hooks that were created for the 30 and the 60 second, and then the scripts that were created for the 30 and the 60 second. Okay, well, can you show us how this works? Yeah. All right, so just to put you on the spot right here, uh, I'm going to say, like, can I create my own topic? Yep. And you can kind of bang that out for us. All right. Um, you see the Slack channel? Yeah, I can see Slack right here. Okay. 
so essentially what I'm going to want to do is, uh, like, can I pick something crazy? Whatever you want. We'll try. I'll see if um, the other, my, my three is active. I don't know if three is active or not. I'm turning back on if it isn't. Okay. Well, uh, I own a, a surfboard store and I want to know why it is important to uh, take lessons before going surfing for the first time. Okay. We turn on the 30 second one and then I'll put that in there. And obviously, I'm from just north of Toronto. There is not much surfing going on here. I'm trying to pick something that I basically can guarantee Tom doesn't have an answer for. It hasn't met. I'm I'm seeing does this app work for basically any industry? Why do surfers? Uh, yeah. Why should Why should I take a, a Why should I take a a week of surfing lessons before going on my first surfing trip? That's hard. I don't think this app is actually going to do this. I'm going to be honest. So you've done that. This is now the trigger. And it's going to give us, in theory. Oh, there you go. All right. So let's see what we can do here. I'm talking to all the adventure enthusiasts who want to ride the perfect wave on their first surfing trip. Do you know the secret? Taking a week of surfing lessons before you hit the beach. With expert guidance, you'll learn the techniques, get comfortable with the movements, and gain confidence, maximizing your safety and enjoyment. So ditch the instant gratification, put in the the preparation, and ensure your first surfing trip is an incredible memory rather than a wipeout. Remember, practice makes perfect waves. Yeah, that's good. Version one, right? And there's the other version right here. Are you yeah. trying to catch your first wave? So you think about that call out, right? Before you jump on a plane to your surf paradise, consider this. Just a week of surfing lessons will be your game changer. Why? The ocean doesn't come with an instruction manual, but we do. Dive in safely with expert guidance. Make those wipeouts profitable, uh, profitable learning experiences and master your balance on the board. Wave goodbye to newbie mistakes. Spend your travel time surfing, not learning. Paddle in the confidence on your first paddle with in with confidence on your first day and ride the wave of uh ride the wave of trip success. So we might, you know, it was good. And we might want to edit that that that, that was bang it. That was bang on until that last line right there. Wait, but at the down. same time, if I'm a surfing instructor, I need the call out, I need the framework, and then I can hit them with the different calls to action. Yeah. So and then we, it, go ahead. Well, and the way that you actually record with people is you basically focus on one line at a time so that it's good. And by doing selective editing, uh, you can basically guarantee, you know, if we're only doing a line at a time, I can guarantee that it's going to turn out all right just because I'm I'm using, you know, select, selective editing and, and putting, you know, people who are good at editing in charge of that deal. 100 percent that process in the back end right the editing process but even before that so if i'm handing these scripts off to a client think about what i was saying earlier right here's the visual of that here's the topic that we entered in, entered into uh slack right mm -hmm. here's the actual script and here's the hook this is the hook that um gpt4 chose are you trying to insert niche obviously it's not niche but then it's smart enough to know that we had said why should i take a week of surfing lessons so we know that we're in the surfing niche if you will right so what mm -hmm. chat GPT came up with was for that, that hook, are you trying to catch your first wave? It's very related, right? Yeah, I intention I tried to make that hard. I tried to trip it up. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, that obviously neither of us have ever done this before. And it still delivered like an actual fire output that with a slight bit of polish, that would work. Yeah. And for the industry expert, they're gonna know how to polish that. But they're not going to know how to come up with all of that structure, right? And weave all of those, say, things in. They may, but here's the thing. It takes the heavy lifting off of them, right? It puts mm -hmm. out another, another tool to be able to pump out those uh, those scripts. So when it comes to the editing process, the reason why we do it in certain ways is because on the back end, our editing team understands the framework in terms of how we're having our clients record or even we record ourselves. And then they know what to expect in terms of that raw footage, and then they can use uh, our editing process to then trim it down and make sure that it plays nicely with the social media platforms. One, being concise and being under that 30 or 60 seconds, but two, also making sure that we have the editing style that we want in place. 
Mm -hmm. and, and in terms of editing style, that's important because, you know, like we said before, the average view time is going to be one of like the, the major components of like how valuable TikTok or Instagram or whatever finds your video. Yeah. If people watch it for 25, 30, 45 seconds, that lets them know they should show it to more people who are interested in surfing because clearly it, it's a valuable resource. Yeah. So um, if you think about that game, right, then it's a volume play. So now if we, if we think about it, how do I map this type of a business to then also play nicely on vertical video? The reason why I say that is because it's not a specific platform because all of the major platforms right now are taking vertical video. Hmm. Yeah. So like, uh, as I'm just thinking of like a sample editing here, and we won't even get into editing today. Uh, but in essence, I can already see that video. It's somebody talking there. Maybe they're sitting on the beach saying like, you, know, you want to catch your i forget what the the read out was but essentially like want to catch your first wave or want to catch your first wave you know water comes in you show like a two three second surfing montage that really gets people kind of tied in and, and then somebody sitting at the beach whether you know they could be in the water on their board given the rest of the speech they could just be at home and talking over surfing clips it could be you know any other version of that that gets them there um and essentially just showing the business owner and surfing together newbie surfing so that they are automatically just associated with like you want to learn how to surf i have the answer for this because right. we're giving them the visuals that would would indicate that um in a future podcast we'll get into this you know essentially mm -hmm. one of the things that has absolutely changed my life is realizing that when i outsource work you know in the past, you'd think like outsourced work is essentially going to get you like a lower quality return on what you would have done yourself, which is absolutely the wrong way to think of it. Because in 2023, you can find, you know, like cutting edge, you know, like to call somebody a video editor isn't doing it justice. You're, you're like basically hiring a surgeon, you know, people who have, you know, advanced degrees in this who are able to come up with stuff that there is absolutely no way in the world I could have done on my own. And just like, you know, hiring a professional there, not necessarily on a full-time position, hiring somebody to come in like an assassin, bump up these round of videos for you is extremely affordable and completely pays for itself in terms of like, you know, basically client success. So yeah, what I'm taking away from this really, um, I already, I know this. I know when the first time I stepped in front of a camera and I just kind of got over myself, it changed my business. It changed my life. It All of a sudden people started coming to me instead of me having to reach out to them. But the hardest part that I always had was like, all right, one, the hardest part was turning on the camera on any given day. Cause like when you turn it on, you know, this is the next two hours of your life. And then right after I turn it on, I could probably get through the first one, but then I didn't know what to do for the next six fucking speeches. So what you're saying here is by using the zap the way that you've constructed it, you are essentially giving somebody like 10 pieces of content, maybe as hooks or just jump off points, or maybe the exact script that they're going to use, but it's a way to condense it. Like how much time would you think it, it takes you to get like, you know, 10 to 15 pieces of content from somebody? Yeah, my best clients, um, when they were doing this at scale, and when we first started doing this, the very first few sessions of batching, they would take them about an hour to film 15 reels, 30, 60 second reels. So if it's taking them an hour and you're, for example, doing one a day, mm -hmm. would you invest two hours a month to have all of your short form content done for that month? Mm -hmm. That's the playbook. That's what we wanted to do. Cause I know all of these people are busy professionals. And if that's the case, time is money for all of us. So then how do we shorten that? process and that learning curve so if we take that and we basically sequence that stuff but we batch it here's your list of 15 topics here's your list of 15 scripts right now you're ready so then when you do go and you lock yourself in your room right for an hour you're done now you have you send th that batch recording over to our editing team or your editing team that's been trained on that process and then they circle back and you have 15. so as a business owner I don't have 30 pieces of content. I mean, like I can't talk about 30 separate things every single month. Do I double back on it? Like, how do I like running a digital marketing agency? There's probably 10 things that we actually do. Sure. So 
what do I double them next month? Do I do I just do the same script? Do I find a different jump off? Like, how do I keep content coming? And and is the content focused? Like, just making fifteen pieces of content isn't cool. I'm, I'd assume they they're supposed to follow a trajectory. Um, well, it depends on how you want to look at it. But if you do only offer, say, a limited amount of services, which you should, um, there's 105 different hooks, right, that you can use to create these scripts. So if there were 10 things that you're talking about, I'm sure you can unpack that into subtopics as well. And that's why we leveraged Google and ChatGPT, because you should be saying the same thing in so many different ways because of the different audiences that you're trying to reach, right? Not every personality is the same. Timing, circumstances, and the way you say things changes all, right? So if there's a different way in which something caught your attention because of the way it was framed or the timing of that, give yourself that opportunity. In addition to that too, we, are, we do not have the time to talk about it in this podcast episode, but you think about this, all of those things, you're giving yourself an opportunity to, to win. So once you have this video content library out there working on your behalf, all of the winners that you have, why don't you, why wouldn't you put some money behind those so that they're consistently getting in front of your ideal audience? Because you've already utilized the, the organic algorithm to prove and to select and your winners. So within yeah. now this round of winners, put some money behind those. Mm. Absolutely. And so then I guess it comes down to just, you know, if you're making the content, the content has a purpose. So the way that you select a winner is, you know, whether it's based on views, on shares, on likes, on whatever, but they should definitely be driving people to a certain outcome. Like, Absolutely. honestly, like it comes down to, did this drive new business for me? Well, did back this... to no like, and trust, new business, right? And then we talk about it in the stages of the content marketing funnel as well. There's no like, and trust. There's top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, whatever it is, you have a certain outcome. But in this specific episode, we're talking about short form video that should be engaging, right? That ultimately it's watch time first, right? Every other mm -hmm. domino will fall after that, that one thing does, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do is take, get as many at bats as possible so that we can find out where our winners are and with you, with, the, with those winners, then we dissect them. Right? And that's why the quality actually matters, right? Like we're right. looking for watch town, like essentially we we're looking for no right now no like a little bit of trust because you're you're demonstrating your expertise but essentially like if you show up with like a crispy camera and your audio is on point and your hook works even if i scan by it i still know that tom tran is a guy that knows about like video and stuff yep all right uh well do you have anything else you want to kind of throw into our our short form video how you can produce high quality content at scale you know quickly I know nice. you're going to have questions. I know it. I absolutely do. No matter where you are in, in the, the stage of your content creation process and, and journey. So feel free to reach out so we can help unpack and, and, and just help you along that way. Right. So what if I want, what if I want that zap off you? What, how do yeah. I get that zap? And I'm not contact us. Zap. contact us and wherever you're seeing this right now, reach out to us and we'll take care of you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Tom, thank you for that. That's, um, you know, like I said, I use it in my business already, but getting a little bit of the fundamentals behind that really kind of helps me out and understand why it works. Um, absolutely. If you need this for your business, if you think being able to produce, you know, 10 scripts in less than a minute would be effective for you uh, on any topic, absolutely hit us up in the con in the comments down below. We'll let you know, or you can just find Tom on tntdigitalmarketing.com um past that episode 11 it's a wrap we're in the books and we'll see you next week for episode number 12 later